Behind bars for more than two months when their baking soda is mistaken for cocaine. That's the nightmare story. A couple in their late 60s now has to tell. Channel 7's Janelle Lilly tells us why a $2 drug testing kit and slow justice may be to blame. She joins us with the story tonight. Janelle. Well, guys, this is that $2 kit that landed this couple behind bars. It's known for false positives, but is used by authorities throughout this country and Arkansas. The inside of a jail cell is by no means a welcoming place. It was horrible. After all, it's where we house the guilty. Man on the floor! Stay in your cells and heads out of the wall. But sometimes it's also where we hold the innocent. But when you start talking about a Schedule I controlled substance, you're talking about a major case. And on May 8th, police at Fort Chaffee thought they hit the mother load. Gail Griffin and her husband Wendell Harvey have been driving trucks together since 2009. They haul explosives for the military. It's a job that requires a high security clearance and a rigorous background check. But at these gates, a routine inspection turned into a real life nightmare. I use baking soda for everything. In fact, she buys it in bulk at Costco. But rather than taking the tub on a cross-country haul, she stores some in sandwich bags, which often accumulate throughout their sleeper trailer. Well, I saw the guy uh, hand out a, a bag of baking soda out the driver's door, and I told him, you know, that's just uh, baking soda. And so I think that's when it started. The Fort Chaffee police were suspicious of that white powdery substance, so they called the narcotics unit from the Barling Police Department for help. We tested it three different times out of two different kits to ensure that we were not having any issue and we got a positive conclusion each time we tested. They thought we had like 13.2 ounces of cocaine. I was and the guy said I had over $300,000 in cocaine. As a former police officer in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Wendell Harvey was stunned. His initial thought, how did cocaine get into the baking soda? You don't even doubt the test because I guess I'm stupid or something. You know, you, I'm just a citizen. Well, we didn't and I didn't think, I, it never occurred to me that the tests were invalid. The test is a $2 narcotics identification kit used by law enforcement agencies across the country. They're not infallible. They are su subject to uh, misreadings. Greg Parrish is the director of the Arkansas Public Defender Commission. There's uh, a lot of these instances where they get false positives. Candy confused for meth vitamins as amphetamines, tortilla flour testing positive as cocaine. In Florida, the Department of Law Enforcement lab systems found 21% of the substances that tested positive for meth in the field gave a negative result in the crime lab. Gail and Wendell were taken to the Sebastian County Jail. Door opens and there's a, a woman in the top bunk and a woman in the bottom bunk and a woman on the floor. And then I had to sleep on the floor on the other side, right next to the toilet. There for 10 days before the court approved them for a public defender. In some place that it doesn't feel like America, you know, I, I can't call anybody, you know, nobody knows where I'm at, you know. It took four weeks before Wendell was able to call his son and let him know where they were. I thought that I died and gone to hell. Really? After another two weeks, now early June, a specific attorney was assigned to their case. She sent Wendell a letter. And we got an immediate response back from Mr. Harvey saying the substances are not illegal controlled substances. They are not. And he was uh, very vehement about it. In fact, uh, he wrote everybody. Wendell had written everyone, his attorney, the court, the prosecutor. The public defender knew right away this case was unusual. We immediately contacted the prosecutor through the public defender and said, you got the letter. He's saying it's not controlled substance. Can you expedite the testing with the crime lab on this? Another four weeks passes. On July 11th, the prosecutor finally asks the crime lab to expedite that test. The lab determines it's baking soda. On July 14th, two months after that routine stop, Gail and Wendell walk out of the Sebastian County Jail, their lives forever changed. We both didn't think we were gonna get out at all. It took another couple of months for them to get their impounded truck back from Arkansas. They say it was badly damaged, and so was their reputation. They're still working to get their security clearance and their jobs back. How could a mistake like this happen? We're not chemists, and 
We don't roll with a chemistry set in the back of a police car. So right now, this $2 test is all officers in the field have to determine probable cause. It's one of the best ones on the market that we can find, so it will have to be the one that we will stay with. As long as that's true, both Gail and Wendell worry this could happen again to another innocent person. Two law-abiding uh, working people, then there's no telling you know, how many mistakes they've made. It's a mistake, and, and these mistakes happen quite often, I think. Right now, the couple has no income. They say family and friends have stepped up to help out until they can hopefully one day get their jobs and security clearance back. Unbelievable. Really. Th there are so many outrages here. It's yeah. hard to know where to start, but hopefully some change will come along as a result of this. And Janelle, we thank you. We can tell you as a result of this investigation and other complaints, the public defender's office here in Arkansas is hoping to change the rules so that a public defender is assigned to each case within 72 hours. And again, right now, there are no rules on that at all. For Wendell and Gail, it took almost a month. Had they gotten an attorney sooner, they may have spent less time behind bars.